Hello everyone, this is the Casual Fan. Formula 1's Drive to Survive has been a welcome addition to how the sport was broadcast to the world. A 10-part docu-series that covers what happened in the previous season in the form of specific storylines has contributed to bringing in a new audience to the sport. However, the docu-series has shortcomings. The shortcomings that do get questioned time and again by not only the fans but sometimes the F1 personnel as well. Until last season, the docu-series was not under too much scrutiny because of some of the creative freedoms that it had taken. But this season, the wheels have started to turn in the wrong direction for the series. It started with MotoGP introducing its own docu-series this season that would launch a few days after Drive to Survive but on Amazon Prime. The MotoGP docu-series, just like its F1 counterpart, was released earlier to a section of the media. And the overwhelming feedback? Well, in their view, it's better than Drive to Survive. And this was where the wheels initially started to turn for the docuseries. Things took a turn for the worse when Stefano Domenicali came out and said that Drive to Survive needs to add value to the sport for it to continue in the future. To add to this, the reigning Formula 1 world champion Max Verstappen, who had opted out of taking part in sitting for interviews for Drive to Survive, has ruled out any further association with the docuseries even in the future. While the series launches today and in a way marks the start of the Formula 1 2022 season, in this piece we will talk about why the series might be on very thin ice and unless it brings in major changes, it might be looking at an early exit. Having said that, first of all, before we go ahead and talk about why the series finds itself in deep waters, we need to first acknowledge that what Drive to Survive has achieved was never anticipated. The docu-series brings new and interesting storylines and behind-the-scenes footage that are not available in your daily coverage. It brought to the front the never-seen-before side of the sport that was intriguing for the fans and even the ones that had not seen the sport at all. There is this management quote that states, acquiring a new client or a customer is costlier than maintaining the ones that you already have. As a business, Formula One has benefited from drive to survive, bringing in new eyeballs and without a doubt, the increase in viewership, however incremental it may be, does have some contribution from the docuseries. And even though the new MotoGP series might even be touted as the better product right now, the origin of that series has to be attributed to the success of Drive to Survive. Having said that, let's now get to the crux of the matter and have a look at why the docuseries might be in a spot of bother. The biggest turn-off for the hardcore F1 fans is the fake storylines that the series leans on at various moments in the documentary. In even this time around, there seems to be a narrative where Daniel Ricciardo and Lando Norris do not get along well and throw snide remarks at each other. Last season, there was an almost outrageous narrative showed in the docuseries where Valtteri Bottas was using mind games to beat Lewis Hamilton. The series focused on what happened at Russia in 2020, a point of season when the championship was almost done and dusted. However, it was never touched upon why such mind games were not played before or even after the Russian Grand Prix as Bottas, well, he was, if we are fair, thoroughly outclassed by Hamilton throughout that season. The veracity of such episodes is what is always brought into question when these fake narratives are built upon for one episode but do not hold true when you look at the season in its entirety. As a spectacle and drama, it might look good, but as an F1 fan, when you know that there is no truth to that narrative, it forces you to not only question but in some cases switch off the series in its entirety. When Drive to Survive was first launched in 2018, teams like Mercedes and Ferrari opted out of giving any access to the docuseries. Consequently, in the following years, these teams have come around and opened the doors to the docuseries. However, 
last season, Max Verstappen was quite vocal in opting out of giving any interviews to the documentary. The Red Bull driver expressed his disapproval on the way the producers had taken snippets of what he had said, taken it completely out of context and used it entirely to create a provocative narrative. To add to this, it becomes even more apparent in the docu-series that drivers like Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen, both of them legitimate world champions in their own rights, do not have too many sound bites in the series. Which does indicate that the two may have even stepped back from giving interviews to the docu-series after Verstappen's public stance. The problem, however, is that Max is not the only driver that has spoken out against the docu-series, as even Lando Norris had mentioned in his Twitch stream of not really liking the fake narrative of tension between him and Carlos Sainz in 2020 in Drive to Survive. Although drivers like Sergio Perez have been supportive of Drive to Survive, it does not mean that they will be okay with the fake narrative that could be portrayed involving them. And that's where the creative freedom by Netflix has been a step too far right now. The 2021 season was arguably one of the greatest seasons in the history of the sport. And Drive to Survive did not even have access to one of the protagonists of the rivalry because he lost faith in the documentary. If that's not a big loss for the docuseries, then it's hard to understand what else will be. The biggest critique faced by the series right now is the fact that somewhere down the line, by focusing on drama, entertainment and maybe even a bit of controversy, the real sport is missed out. There is without a doubt a new wave of F1 fans that started following the sport after only watching Drive to Survive. But the problem for them is the perception that they have of the sport does not match with what they see on the screen. They don't see Valtteri Bottas playing mind games. Rather, they see Valtteri Bottas being a good and obedient number two driver to Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes and getting truly dominated by him almost every weekend. They see Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz still being friendly despite driving for different teams. They do not even know who the cream of the crop is. They do not know how great a talent Fernando Alonso is because he hardly gets any recognition in the series, even in the episode where they highlight Esteban Ocon's win at Hungary. This is exactly why there are some fans who take some time to get used to the sport and start enjoying it for what it is. However, there are others that leave the sport altogether because the product that they are seeing on their screens right now was not what was advertised in Drive to Survive. It is precisely this part that seems to have forced Stefano Domenicali to speak out and make a clear statement that the docu-series needs to add value to the sport. Is bringing new eyeballs to the sport adding value? Sure, sure it is. But then you have to ask how many customers stick around if they don't get what was advertised? The answer, not many. Not many stick around. The docu-series is at a critical juncture at the moment, with hardcore fans as well as even some of the drivers starting to turn their backs on it. This might just be high time for the series to so start making amends and using the creative freedom wisely. It desperately needs to regain the trust of the reigning champion. Rethink how it approaches the rivalries and most importantly, not take the creative freedom and portray a product that is far removed from what F1 truly is. Stefano Domenicali's words should be a clear indication that the series is not in the most comfortable of situations. And if it does not make the desired changes, F1 might either look elsewhere or call it off entirely. So these are my views about Netflix Drive to Survive. What do you guys think? Do let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel and see you next time.